this coming week, you guys. It's a big in, okay? What is up, my fellow spiritual badasses out there on the internet? It is me. <laughs> my name is Tanya Michelle, if you are new here, and welcome to this upcoming week's video where we talk about the full moon happening in the sign of Cancer, and also the Mercury retrograde, and a few other things that are really big that are happening this week. Like, this is such a big week, probably the biggest week of the month in January, I would even venture out to say. And it kind of starts already, like today when I'm filming this on the 14th because mercury just went retrograde today and on the 17th we have the cancer full moon there's a lot of important shit happening right now and then as always darling at the end we will go over what this means for your rising sign as always please 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 watch this first part of the video because i only spend like a minute or two on the signs at the very end that is just like talking about where this stuff i'm talking about in the first part of the video is going to affect you in which area of your life so you want to make sure that you're watching Watching this this will be like the foundation for what we go over when it comes to your sign you don't want to be missing this part you just don't okay so please stick with me here get comfy stay a while there's no rush boo some of the stuff that I talk about in this video though I already went over for your sign for the January sign horoscopes I did them all in one video so if you haven't seen your horoscope for January go check that out because this month there are some major major shifts happening that are going to affect our lives for the next 18 months so you if you missed your horoscope this month you would want to go check that out okay also please like this video comment down below it really 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 helps me out and i would really really appreciate it it will help this video out it will help more people see it people may need to see this you know it's a crazy fucking time okay if you're like barely hanging in there by fret thread i feel you <laughs> i have been there if you're loving life i feel you too because i've been there too i've been just about everywhere honestly so let's go ahead and get into it let's start with this mercury retrograde mercury retrograde just started today on the day that i'm filming this i don't know when you guys are going to be seeing this but it uh just started today on the 14th it will be retrograding until february 3rd so the next few weeks as always with a mercury retrograde mercury is basically backtracking it appears to be moving slower in the sky when we look at it and so it appears to be going backwards from our perspective and because of this reason because of this backtracking shit it's not a great time to be like starting new things because then you may have to backtrack or then something may come back around or you might regret it or you might like change your mind you know mercury rules over the mind the mental realm communication and so anything that deals with those things it's not a great time to be starting something new to be like signing your name on something like really important i've learned for me not to get my hair done because mercury rules over the sign that i have my venus in so it is just not a good time for that, but there's just, it's not like the best time to be starting anything new. It's not super dramatic. If you absolutely have to, then don't stop yourself because it's Mercury retrograde, right? But just do proceed with caution. Just know that you're likely gonna have to go back and like redo something or look at something again, or something's gonna come back around at some point. Just kind of keep that in mind if you do. But what's really interesting about this Mercury retrograde, you guys, is that Mercury's retrograding a few degrees away from Saturn in Aquarius. And what this means is that this is a reflection, like the start of this Mercury retrograde is going to be a reflection on all these Saturn and Aquarius things and lessons that we've been learning over the past like year, a little over a year now. Saturn and Aquarius has brought up a lot of social issues, a lot of social division, hive mind themes, you could say, separate groups, you know, that kind of like stick together or like have one way of thinking, one track of mind. It's also brought up a little bit of weirdness in terms of thinking for yourself or thinking outside of a group or where you fit in, in terms of labels and boxes and groups etc we've seen a lot of that in the world and even if it's not even if you haven't really been paying attention to it personally it's there right i think at, to some level we can all agree that we've seen a lot in terms of social issues okay saturn also rules science saturn also rules higher forms of technology so basically what i think with this is that we are seeing a reflection on these themes we may see a lot of backtracking in terms of scientific things that have came out over the last 
you know, year and a half. We may see issues with technology or social media, different social medias. Mercury retrograde is going to bring up these themes. Now, Mercury is also going to be squaring Uranus while it, it goes retrograde as well. So to me, this could be something with power, the power grid, you know, something like this. They're being so close to Saturn, Saturn rules restrictions. And that's why we've seen a lot of these like big restrictions on people, humanity, right? Whether it's lockdowns or just implementing these like really tight restrictions. I think because of this with Mercury retrograding here, there's going to be a lot of backtracking and reflecting on the restrictive measures that have been taken over the last year. And if they even work, right? Like, are we, what are we doing here? Right? And so I think that that is really what's going to be happening here. So I do think that this Mercury retrograde is going to be like a backtracking or a reflection on certain social issues that that we've already been seeing come up. This retrograde's like basically like, okay, let's let's stop here for a minute and think about some shit because it's gotten a little too far. Like how much farther do we wanna progress? right? How much farther do we want to go with a lot of these social issues? How much farther do we want to go with these heavy restrictive measures? How much farther do we want to go, right? Aquarius is kind of like the sign of the group and the outcast, right? To further to be an outcast, there has to be a group, right? And I actually talked a lot about Aquarius and all this in my 2022 predictions video, which you haven't seen yet because it's not out yet, but it will be out a few days after you're watching this. And I'm telling you guys, like, I got very real and raw in that video, okay? Like we, I got into some shit, okay? It might be a little bit controversial. So make sure you check that out when that comes out or when you see that uploaded. So because this Mercury retrograde is so close to Saturn and squaring Uranus, which we've been going through this like rough Saturn Uranus tension all year year in 2021 of like holding on to the old and then no we need to like progress and this breaking down of old structures or this radical change when it comes to structure and restrictions this just appears to me like some kind of reversal with a lot of the major themes that we've already been seeing but i also think that this is going to bring up even themes from the beginning of 2020 where all this started and why do i think that because because Mercury is going to retrograde back into Capricorn. So it's gonna start in Aquarius, start kind of backtracking, and then move back into the previous sign of Capricorn. Okay, so it's gonna be retrograding right on that Aquarius Capricorn cusp, where we've seen a lot of major, major transits, like major, major astrological transits that mark eras, right? That mark massive, massive periods of time, like the Great Conjunction, which I have a whole freaking video on, looking at the big picture of what's coming in the next decade, in the next century, all of that. But also we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, right? In Capricorn, right before that with the South Node there, which was really bringing up like the shadow side of people in power, governments and officials that are supposed to be like helping us and just how corrupt and shady and deep the corruption and shady goes within the cracks of the foundation. I've been talking about this for a while, a few years now. Because Mercury is going to retrograde back into Capricorn and hit Pluto, the planet of power, shadiness, hidden secrets, you know, things that are corrupt, people in power, wealth, crime, things like this, because Mercury is going to retrograde back to Pluto, I think what we're actually going to see here is that we're seeing how a lot of these social issues that we have, what the actual root of them is, where they actually come from. We're also, I think, seeing the root of a lot of what's happened over the last two years with Mercury retrograding back to Pluto. It's like, because Pluto wants to get to the fucking root of shit, man. It's in Capricorn. It's like, it goes deep, deep down into the foundational structure that's holding everything up. And so this is going to be some kind of massive reversal and bringing out a lot of hidden information that was not known previously. It's going to show us where maybe we've been reflecting on like surface level social issues and, and all this other stuff when actually the problem is, is much deeper than that. And the real problem is actually hidden. It is so, so much deeper than we think it is. And so I think Pluto is really trying to, I think this Mercury retrograde may bring some of this up. And I thought this was really interesting. I kind of like this interpretation 
interpretation kind of hit me like a couple weeks ago and I shared it over on Patreon and then I shared it on Instagram and I really wanted to share it with you guys over here if you don't follow me in the other two places. And as always, I talk about this even more so like on a deeper level. I'm a little bit more unfiltered over on my Patreon because I can be. If you ever want to join me and, and over there and kind of hear about this stuff beforehand, then definitely make sure that you do that. I think this is also going to bring up themes of isolation and the effect that a lot of these social issues and these restrictions on people have had. The Mercury retrograde is a bit more sober and serious it, because it's retrograding on Saturn and then going across Pluto. Both of those planets are pretty big and serious planets. So I, this is not just like, oh, <laughs> technology is pissing me off. Like, yes, that can happen too. But I think that it's, it's a little deeper than this, okay? This Mercury retrograde has some kind of deeper meaning that is more psychological, mental, but also roots back to something else. And so that is like really what I think that we're going to see here. I also think another way to interpret this, especially with Mercury going back and hitting Pluto, is like a major, major truth bomb of information that will like reveal like root issues or some kind of root cause or like the hidden intentions or hidden deeds of people in power or the issues that we've seen over the last few years and possibly even longer. You know, Capricorn has a connection with time and history. Pluto's been in Capricorn for a while now, since 2008. So we really may see some massive things getting dug up, some massive information like whistleblowers and, and stuff like this. I think we may see some of like the major social social media owners going through something or dealing with some kind of power shift or being exposed to something like this is definitely going to bring up some stuff with social media and the people that are behind these social media platforms, not to mention just media in general and how it affects our minds because Aquarius is a very mental sign. And also just how technology, you know, affects us to some level and affects us in a earthly sense. I think some really great questions that I wrote down and put on my Instagram to ask ourselves during this time is, how do we, how do we influence the collective and how does the collective influence us? Who is really in control here? Are we boxing ourselves into a group or label or are we doing that to others? What is the root of our societal issues and where do we need to learn or reflect more on our thoughts on societal issues? Where can we also admit that maybe we don't know the root of our societal issues and that maybe our way of thinking needs some work, you know? Maybe it's not all the way correct or maybe our way of thinking isn't true for everybody. It's not a one size fits all. I think this could also be a massive narrative shift in some of the the themes that we've seen since early 2020. I think that there may be a lot more revealed regarding the pandemic and its origins and those in power. I think that it will expose a lot of corruption of those in power or that pretend to be of service to the ordinary person. As I've been saying with Pluto and Capricorn and Saturn and Aquarius, it may seem like someone is trying to relate to the ordinary person, but really they may not be, they may be corrupted. So I think this will also expose greed, certain people of the elite, big corporations, big companies. And I think that this could cause social upheaval. And I also think economical shifts are likely a possibility along with suppressed information. Also, like I think that we could maybe see like the death of somebody powerful or even just a shift in power and just massive backtracking reversals or changes in tech and tech lords in general. Okay, so let's talk about the Cancer full moon happening on the 17th. And do you remember that Mercury retrograde is happening until February 3rd? So it's not just like, you know, few days it's like the next few weeks as well and really even after it goes direct it will still have to go back over the places it already went over so it won't be fully getting done with this whole cycle until like the beginning of March so do keep that in mind but at least it won't be retrograde anymore after the third which is a time of moving forward again so this cancer full moon happening on the 17th it's happening around 6 50 p.m eastern standard time so adjust accordingly to your time zone this Cancer full moon is really interesting because it is happening with the sun 
opposite the moon, which makes a full moon, right? But the sun in Capricorn is on top of Pluto. Once again, we're just having a lot of these planets kind of dancing around Pluto, trying to bring up things that are hidden, things from the underworld, trying to show us the deeper meaning behind things or the root issues behind things. What's in our collective shadow that we need to purge, detox, or know about, shed light on? This Cancer Full Moon, I really see the theme of this basically being like letting go of childish ways, getting pretty real and seeing something from a new angle, seeing where you may be trying to control something or where something may be controlling you, seeing where you've given your power away. Cancer Full Moon in general does indicate like an emotional release, some kind of emotional purging, getting real with ourselves and feeling things that maybe we haven't wanted to feel. Growing up in a way, you know, like a Cancer Full Moon is, is really about growing up and, and letting go of some kind of emotional attachment in our lives that maybe we haven't wanted to see clearly or deal with, like we've just wanted to hold on because that's all we knew. And so this Cancer Full Moon is, I think, showing us where we may have some kind of emotional attachment or where something needs to be let go of or washed away. Cancer has that maternal energy, that the energy to create, right? The energy to create life because it's ruled by the moon. Whereas Capricorn, where the sun is, is an earth sign. I've also noticed that full moons are not only just about like peak moments or endings or whatever, they can also a lot of the times be getting back to something that maybe we forgot about or needing to balance out wherever like the sun is with the opposite sign. And so for some, this could also just be re-realizing, you know, something, really reflecting on where we're at emotionally, getting back to a sense of feeling connected to others or our emotional worlds in some way where we need to take care of ourselves emotionally emotionally, where we need to take care of our needs, right? And so for some people, this could be balancing out the energy of setting our goals and restructuring our lives and feeling motivated to build something, do things differently with this Capricorn energy, like being more serious about what we want to build in the world and balancing that out with our emotional needs. You know, where have we maybe been neglecting our emotional needs? Where have we maybe been neglecting our family or the people in our lives that we have strong connections to that we've just been kind of putting off or not really getting emotionally honest with for whatever reason. But what's also really interesting is right after this Cancer full moon, we actually have Uranus going direct the very next day which can kind of feel like a jolt to some, kind of like a forward moving shift wherever you have Taurus in your chart. But also, we will also have the nodes moving into the signs of Scorpio and Taurus and finally out of Sag and Gemini, which I've talked a lot about. I talked about that in my 2022 horoscopes video. And I also talked a lot about it, the 2022 predictions video that I will have coming out within the next week. It's already filmed, already edited. I just wanted to get this video up first anyways but so that is going to be a major shift like literally the next day after the cancer full moon definitely by the 18th you're going to be feeling different there's going to be a different energy it's like the focus is going to be different you've been noticing certain themes wherever you have gemini and sag in your chart then you're going to start noticing themes wherever you have taurus and scorpio for the next 18 months. So this Cancer full moon is marking like a big ending, you guys. This full moon is marking like some kind of big releasing point, like releasing any emotional shit that you have not dealt with, any attachments, anything that you're clinging to that needs to fucking go, right? And you have to, it's not just like, oh, I'm just gonna ignore it, or oh, I'm just gonna like fight it. That's not what I'm saying here. Cancer is not about any of that. Cancer is about feeling it, right? You let it go by feeling it so it doesn't keep having control over you because when you fight something, that's when it actually controls you. Because to fight something in itself is to say, hey, this has power over me or this has some kind of power. Even if you don't think it's over you at the time, if you're fighting something, it's because you think it has some kind of power. Something that you're not worried about, you're not gonna fight, right? Like you're not fucking worried about it. It's not, it doesn't pose a threat to you. <laughs> 
if there are emotions or emotional attachments or emotional needs or things that you've been depending on that need to go, then this is the full moon that you can do that. Really feeling and releasing that stuff can really, really help. This is also pulling in a focus of like, hey, what have you been dependent on? Where do you need to let go of old dependencies, old programming, old subconscious behaviors or patterns in order to move on and in order to reach the goals that you wanna reach? Mercury will retrograde back into Capricorn on the 25th, well, it will immediately start coming up on Pluto, like as soon as it enters Capricorn, because Pluto is, is at 26 degrees, it enters Capricorn at 29 degrees, it immediately will start coming up on Pluto. So around the 25th of the month and the very end of this month and beginning of February, we're gonna be feeling that Mercury-Pluto energy of something deep being revealed to us or trying to figure out something very deep, figure out what has control over us, changing our minds over something that we thought to be true. That could be a time where some deep stuff is revealed, where some secrets are revealed, things coming up from the underworld or the collective shadow. We're really seeing things in a new light or we're really changing our mind about something. This could also be a time where a lot of like really deep and heavy stuff is revealed. So yeah, that is everything for the general astrology. I guess it's a little bit more than just this coming week. It's really like the next few weeks in a lot of ways, but definitely let me know down below uh, if you see any of this happening. I would really, 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 really like to know. <laughs> Make sure that you keep up with me on Instagram. I will be posting anything that I see happening that aligns with these themes. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into what this means for your sign. So starting with cancer. <laughs> so cancer, this is basically you seeing where you're a bad bitch, okay? Like you are. <laughs> or just a badass in general. You get what I mean. So this is really seeing where, <laughs> where you need to get back to who you are, right? Like there's like a piece of you with this full moon that it's like revealing something to you about yourself. Now, for some people, it could be where you are kind of attached to something or dependent on something, especially in terms of a relationship or other people or how you show up in the world. It's definitely a time where it's like, you may really be feeling the most, that energy that I talked about before, like letting go of childish ways and maturing and moving on, learning how to depend on you, learning how to find dependability within yourself learning how to depend on you, learning how to meet your needs. And so this, this full moon could really be bringing up a lot to do with your needs and your subconscious programming, certain patterns or behaviors that you know, you're seeing differently for the first time. And so this full moon is kind of like a flushing out and a heightened time where you can feel very, very intuitive. Like you're definitely going to be feeling very, very in tune with your intuition and your emotions and your feelings. But it could also be a time that is bringing on a lot of change within your relationships your significant relationships, your marriage, or just people in your life in general, and where that's going or what needs to change there in order for you to move forward. And this Mercury retrograde is happening in your eighth house of shared resources, money, and finances, and just really big life changes. Now it is just a Mercury retrograde, even though it is a little bit more of a serious one, but this could be a time where you are rethinking your investments, rethinking where you're going financially, rethinking who, or who you share money with, or there could be going on with your your partner, something going on with your partner's money, where they're kind of rethinking things. This is not a good time for signing contracts or initiating anything new financially because likely it's going to backtrack or there's going to be a change of mind or a change in something. And so I would just say that be very, very careful if you can put it off, like wait to do your taxes until after February 3rd, it's because the eighth house literally rules taxes and Mercury's retrograding there. So that is what I would say for you, Cancer. Let's go ahead and move on to Leo. So for Leos, this Mercury retrograde is happening in our 12th house, if you're a Leo rising like me, of our subconscious and our patterns. And so this could definitely be a time where we are letting go of something. Um, this looks like a time where we are really letting go of old, like, self-sabotaging behaviors of dependency on something or where we're letting go of self-undoing behaviors things that are self-destructive where we are driven by our feelings our emotions our moods 
to do things that really actually end up working against us. This could also be a time where you, your dream world is very, very active and trying to tell you something where you're getting messages in your dreams, where you're feeling a little bit more like subconsciously intuitive and also where you are feeling like you want to get away more or like you need space to process something or like you want to kind of do things behind the scenes so you can feel things a little bit more. You've been really focused on like work this month so far and health and your day-to-day -day routines and schedules. And this may be a time where it's like, okay, maybe you need a break. Maybe you need to process some things. Maybe you need to feel some things that you've been putting off. Maybe you need to let go of some things that are really like preventing you from doing your job or getting, you know, being in a routine or getting things done. It's like there's certain things that you've been depending on or attached to that are actually working against you in your day-to-day -day life. This could be like some kind of bad habit or something like that that just like is just really getting in your way and this full moon is bringing this up as a chance to address this and work through it and kind of dig into your subconscious and see the pattern or see what's going on here and how you can move through it and kind of let it go so it doesn't keep getting in your way. Also, the Mercury retrograde is happening in our seventh house of relationships. Like we already don't have enough going on in the last year with relationships, right? And other people in general. But this Mercury retrograde is happening in our seventh and then moving back into our sixth. And so this is gonna be a really big time of possibly our partner dealing with some reversals or some mercury retrograde energy, a little wonkiness, forgetfulness, or just issues in general, like backtracking or something, forgetting things, stuff like that, having issues with like tech or communication. There could also be just a lot of really big issues in communication and in how we relate with our partner and stuff like that. This could initiate some kind of serious conversation that was had before the retrograde that you're kind of moving back to or something that's happened over the last month that you kind of have to retrace and go back to. Once Mercury goes back into your sixth house though, this will be a time of reflecting on your routines, your schedules, your work, your health, and where you need to get organized in this area as well. So that is what I'm seeing for Leo. All right, hey Virgo darling. This full moon for you is in your 11th house of friends, groups of people, like-minded people, alliances, etc. Where are you going in life and who the hell are you going with? You know, like who's in your life and who isn't? who's in, who's out. <laughs> this full moon could bring up some turmoil or stir some shit up regarding people in your life, friendships, networking. It could be a time of really reflecting on past connections, feeling nostalgic in terms of different friendships or people that have been in your life. It could also be a time where you are kind of going through a change of heart in terms of where it is that you find your place in the world, where it is that you're going, and what it is that you want to leave behind. It could also be some kind of change regarding children, love, your dating life, sexuality. It's bringing some deep insights in these areas of life, so you definitely want to watch out for that. Now, also, your ruling planet Mercury is going retrograde in your sixth house, Virgo. So, you've likely been having a lot of delays, setbacks, trouble, struggle in terms of your day to day routines, your day to day work, your diet, your health. You know, these areas can really feel a little bit heavy or a little bit confusing or a little bit restrictive. And they've probably been feeling that way for a while with Saturn here in your sixth house. And so, this Mercury retrograde is kind of backtracking and really going back and figuring things out in terms of your health, diet, and work and your routine. What is not working in your routine anymore? And it's actually going to retrograde back into your fifth house of Capricorn and go back to Pluto and Capricorn. So this could be digging up root issues underlying that are affecting your day-to-day -day routines, your health, your diet, why you may have been struggling in these areas or having trouble coming up with a solution in these areas or figuring out what's going on or what it is that's impacting you. This could also be really reflecting on certain habits that you have that are really not helping you either, you know? And so these are the things you could notice over the next 
uh, week, but especially these next couple weeks. Uh, so definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating for you. I would love to hear your feedback and we are gonna move on to Libra. So for Libra, this Cancer full moon is happening in your 10th house. Um, if you're a Libra rising, so do remember your rising sun resonates most for this, but your 10th house is about career and your public image, your brand, where you're going, your future goals, your legacy, and what direction that you're headed in in life, where you want to go in life, your public life, your public persona. So, and really just general life goals, future goals, achievements. And so with the full moon happening here, that could be bringing up those themes. You could be really focused on career or there could be a situation that arises with the topic of career, your reputation, authority figures, these types of things, your future, your goals. And it could be really a time of reflecting on that, you know, where do you need to make sure your foundation's good in order to get to where you want to go? Where do you need to plant some roots to get to where you want to go? It could also be a time where you're reflecting a lot on the past or family or just work situations in general. So that is what's coming for you with this Cancer Full Moon. It could also be a time that brings up some disturbances within the home and family and that really gives you a different perception in terms of life and what you want in life. We also have this Mercury retrograde happening in your fifth house of love, romance, children, fertility, enjoyment, and just where you find your joy. This has been a difficult area for you over the past year because Saturn's been here and Mercury happens to be retrograding basically right on Saturn, just a couple degrees away. And so this is kind of reflecting on these hard lessons you've been learning when it comes to having fun, finding your joy, dating, romance, sexuality, children, what it is that you truly want out of life and what it is that you truly find joy in. And then we also have Mercury retrograding back into Capricorn and also hitting Pluto as well in your fourth house of home and family again and so once again this area is definitely a pretty big deal over these next couple weeks where you're really reflecting on where it is that you feel comfortable your personal life you may be feeling a little bit more to yourself you know you just may be feeling a little bit more secluded and you may want it that way there may be some personal matters going on with family home your living situation and just overall really where you want to set root roots for yourself like i said before where you want to build this foundation and this could be a time of really reflecting on that so that is what i see for libra risings moving on to scorpio risings for scorpio risings this full moon is happening in your ninth house which in ancient astrology was the house of god basically because it rules over your belief systems what you have faith in the higher meaning and purpose of things education travel because these experiences can give us a different perspective and so with the moon, full moon being in your ninth house, uh, this is a time of really reflecting on your belief systems and if they still really work for you. It could also be a time where you're feeling nostalgic in terms of maybe wanting to go somewhere or feeling like you want to get away or feeling like you want to maybe go visit back home where you're from or something like that. Uh, it could also be a time where you're really ending some kind of cycle with learning something new, but really it's just a time of reflecting on these ninth house themes in some way. And it could be a challenging new perspective that comes in for you or some new information that really changes how you feel about certain belief systems or views, religious views, political views, etc. So these themes could be really heightened around this time. There could be a rapid changing in the way that you're thinking and your day-to-day -day lifestyle and how you're going about things and somehow that kind of affects your higher vision of life and you know your belief systems when it comes to life and just any kind of belief system in general so then we have the mercury retrograde happening in your fourth house of home family your roots your living situation your foundations your past your parents ancestry heritage etc and so this could be a time where you're really reflecting on these things where you're kind of backtracking or you, where you may see more reversals or hang-ups or delays so this could definitely bring some forgetfulness in terms of home and family situations. You could have a family member that you live with or, you know, that's in your life pretty frequently. Um, forget something or, you know, there could be just some hangups here. There could be 
like if you own a house you know this could be what I've seen with Mercury retrograde sometimes is like maybe some kind of work comes up that you put off and that needs to be done or redone with the home so something like that but you're really going to notice those mercury retrograde themes with home and family but also it's going to retrograde back into capricorn your third house of your environment your local environment your city siblings relatives and neighbors and kind of like just your day-to-day -day lifestyle errands schedules etc and so it could definitely be a busy time once mercury retrogrades back into capricorn which is going to be on the 25th of january and it will go direct on the third and i talked about that in the beginning but yeah it's going to be a time where you're really reflecting on your surroundings and what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life and the people and places and things that you frequent in your day-to-day -day life and how that is affecting you or a part of your life it could be some deep realizations i really see here there could be some deep truths or some deep information revealed or some deep perspective changes that happen here for you scorpio so uh, definitely let me know down below if you end up noticing any of those things or how they affect you because i would really like to know so moving on to sagittarius <laughs> i don't know why i said it like that but uh, so this full moon for you, Sag, is happening in your 8th house, which is a little spooky, okay, not gonna lie. It's a little bit of a turbulent house, um, so you could notice some turbulent things coming up around this time with this full moon. There could be some deep reflection going on in terms of money, finances, your partner's money, your partner's finances, if you have a partner, um, shared resources, anything that you share or get that from another person, money that's owed to you or money that you owe, debt. But really with a full moon, it can bring up kind of like peak moments or like crisis situations, but it can also bring up kind of like a dissipating or an ending. So for some of you, this could be a great time if you are like finally paying off that last, you know, that last credit card <laughs> bill that you owe or finally paying off your debt, you know, that you've been working on for a while, uh, something like that, you know, it's like kind of like a a final moment for some for some sages it may be for others then it could be kind of a moment of really embracing something that's out of your control or feeling something that you've been dealing with i've also seen the eighth house play out to where there can be certain past traumas that come up uh, in terms of worth and things that you've been kind of putting off or not wanting to deal with kind of like your shadow so to say so sometimes that can come up as well but either way, it's definitely pointing towards a massive, I think, change or shift happening in your finances. What money goes out and what money comes in and who you are sharing money or resources with. And then we also have the Mercury retrograde happening in your third house. So it's going to be a very Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde for you <laughs> for Sag rising because uh, the third house rules very similar things to Mercury and Aquarius is also an air sign. So there's just a lot of air, a lot of mental activity for you with this Mercury retrograde. Likely some absent-mindedness, forgetfulness, um, delays, setbacks you could notice just uh, it could be like little things you know you leave your house and you forget your phone you know sitting in traffic and you're getting all the red lights you know like just things like that like it, it shouldn't take as long to get to the store but somehow it takes you longer you know like little annoying things like that can come up with mercury retrograde in the third house issues with your phone or your computer or your car like that's I know that's a bad one. I'm not trying to like <laughs> bum you out here. It won't be like that for everybody, okay? So it won't be that bad for everybody, but you will notice a lot of changes happening in your kind of day-to-day -day activities, your day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of your environment and the people that you interact with and the things that you use to communicate and interact with other people, the people, places, and things around you on a day-to-day -day basis, your schedules, meetings, you know, there may be like issues with an app or issues with like you know for forgetfulness especially when it comes to like appointments and schedules so definitely definitely watch out for those things if you have any big appointments meetings etc make sure that you're writing them down make sure that you're double checking make sure that you are leaving the house on time if you got to get somewhere at a certain time maybe give you give yourself you know a 10 minute grace period or something you know like leave a little bit early like things like that because it can really help so just being aware of this can really help it's not like the end of the world you don't need to like 
freak out or worry. You're not gonna die, it's okay. Uh, it's just like little annoying things on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it could be worse, okay? So, um, but it is retrograding on Saturn. So this can also look like a difficult conversation for some Sag risings or a difficult reflection period on something kind of sober and serious. And then Mercury will retrograde back into your second house and conjunct Pluto. Your second house also deals with finances, but more so your money, your income, your revenue, your assets, what you own, not what you own with other people, what you owe to other people, or what they owe to you. More so has to do with what you have individually. And so that could be a reflection period where you're really reflecting on your priorities. You know, you're really reflecting on your money and your foundation with money. You know, what are you building financially and you know, what are your goals and reflecting on those things. It could be definitely a, a very deep reflection period with Mercury hitting Pluto in your second. It could even be a time where you are maybe changing something, you know, making some kind of big change with finances or with your priorities or resources, etc. I would not say it's a great time right now for like investing or doing something you know, very permanent with your money or making like a huge purchase with Mercury retrograde because it's likely going to come back around in some way. And you may likely be reconsidering it or changing your mind or it may not go as planned. Like, you know, with Mercury retrogrades, there can just be a lot of unexpected things that come up and a lot of backtracking. And you don't want that when you're trying to, you know, sign a big financial contract or you know, making some kind of really big purchase. And it's gonna probably be tempting because Venus is retrograde in your second house as well until January 29th. And so it's gonna be very tempting to buy things that you regret buying <laughs> eventually or that aren't what you thought they were or that maybe end up breaking or just something like that. So just be careful this time, be smart about what it is that you are doing with your money and your priorities and all of that. So, which I mean, you don't have to, right? Do you boo, live your best life? You don't gotta take this advice. I'm just telling you what I see here, okay? So, but yeah, let me know down below if this ends up resonating or if you wanna come back and let me know in a couple of weeks, uh, that would be great. I would really, really appreciate it. And we are gonna move on to Capricorn. Lovely Capricorn, this full moon for you is happening in your seventh house of relationships, other people and the significant people within your life. So this full moon is definitely bringing up some deep or intense situations regarding relationships, your significant other, or just other people in your life where maybe you're having to make some changes or you're seeing where changes need to be made, especially on your end. For some of you, this could be walking away from uh, a significant person in your life. It doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be like a marriage partner. Sometimes it can literally be like a best friend, you know, or something like that. But either way, it's like there is some kind of significant change being highlighted here for you with this full moon. There may also be a sense of the past resurfacing or feeling a little bit nostalgic in terms of certain people in your life and like reflecting on how you met or just things like that. It can definitely be a time where you're just seeing something from a different side or a different angle regarding the people in your life and how you show up in the world and you know what it is that you want out of your relationships, your needs, if your needs are being met. And if not, it may be a time of really seeing where you have to make some kind of deep change or where you have to make something deep known. Uh, for some Capricorn risings, this could be like actually exposing yourself in some way. And I mean, it doesn't have to be like dramatic and I'm not necessarily talking about like streaking or something, although that's very fun. But more fun when you're a kid. I mean, like not probably as an adult, <laughs> sorry. But I would more so say this is like with the sun conjunct Pluto, like coming out of the closet about something or getting real about something, shedding light on something that has been going on with you or that you've been feeling, like feeling deeply pulled to, to shed a light on something that's going on with you or something about yourself maybe to someone else. And so that may not be for all of you, but either way, this is definitely putting a focus on self and other. This could also be reflecting back to you through others, something that's going on to, with you, you know, like you could be seeing like behaviors within others could be reflecting 
something actually happening internally with you. It could be reflecting a shadow that you're not seeing within yourself. So that also could be the case for some of you. We also have Mercury retrograding in your second house, uh, basically right next to your ruling planet of Saturn. And so you've been getting really serious, responsible, and really buckling down in terms of finances and probably making some big commitments over the last year and getting really serious about money and finances and resources and you know building up your assets and uh, priorities and so with mercury here retrograding on saturn this is kind of a backtracking with that or a reversal or a reflection period at the least where maybe you're rethinking how you're going about it you're rethinking your priorities you're rethinking your finances your income your assets you know there may be something that you end up feeling like you need to change or you may be going through a change where your old priorities or the old income streams or different forms of revenue that you used to be bringing in are no longer aligned with you and so because mercury is going to retrograde back into your sign capricorn and conjunct pluto which indicates some kind of big reveal or change regarding the root cause of something or regarding reflecting on what you can and can't control um, as well could be a theme. And then we also have Mercury retrograding in your sign. So we have a lot of retrograde energy in your sign where you are really going back and rethinking who you are, what you need, your resources and the lifestyle that you want to have and how you want to support yourself, you know? And so these are really big themes you're going to see over these next couple of weeks. So definitely make sure that you are looking out for those and let me know down below if you see those things happening too. And with that being said, we are going to be moving on to Aquarius. Aquarius. So this Cancer full moon for you is happening in your sixth house of health, work, daily routine, your day-to-day -day shit, right? Shit that you got to do on a day-to-day -day basis that's usually boring and that you usually don't get a lot of credit for, but it's got to be done, right? Mowing the lawn, you know, doing that annoying conference call for work and doing the hard work so you can get paid, um, working on your diet so you don't feel like shit all day, working on your health so you don't feel like shit all day and so you can get shit done, right? And so this Cancer full moon is really reflecting on that. It's really um, bringing up topics like that. It may also be showing you where you have some bad habits or habits that are actually self-destructive or keeping you from getting shit done keeping you from uh you know feeling comfortable in your in your day-to-day -day routines and this could also be a time where this full moon is like bringing up your needs and your day-to-day -day routine and your day-to-day -day health your day-to-day -day life where you need to take care of yourself more or where you need to fit in some time for self-care so those are the big themes coming up for you. This could also be exposing something, Aquarius, a little bit hidden or in your subconscious, something that needs to be healed, some kind of like hidden truth or something like that that could be coming to the surface with this full moon. We also have Mercury retrograding in your sign, Aquarius, but it's kind of like right next to Saturn, your ruling planet. And so it could be a pretty serious time where you're reflecting on who you are as a person, what you're responsible for and kind of like sober and serious topics regarding yourself, your identity, where you're going, what you're doing, what you're initiating, how you show up in the world, your appearance, your body, your physical vitality, etc. So I definitely could see a lot of health themes coming up for Aquarius, Aquarius rising, where you are really seeing a lot of things in terms of your health, your vitality, and um, reflecting on these things. You know, what's good for you? What are your what are your needs? What are your body's needs? What do you need to be able to get through your day-to-day -day routines and schedules? Now, Mercury retrograde is going to go back into Capricorn uh, on the 25th, where it will then conjunct Pluto in your 12th house. And so this could be a massive time of reflecting on really deep stuff, <laughs> Re like really contemplating deep questions, um, contemplating deep issues that may need to be released. This could be a time of endings or reflecting on the past, reflecting on what needs to be let go of, and reflecting on, once again, kind of like self-destructive or self-sabotaging behaviors. And so uh, you could also see some themes in terms of frenemies, so to say, like maybe some people in your life that 
are actually like like may not have like the best intentions so um, and this could also actually be a time where you are shown your true intentions like maybe you didn't realize it or you know like you have hidden intentions that you didn't realize and that comes to the surface and kind of promotes some kind of healing that needs to be done so anyway so that's what i'm seeing for you aquarius definitely let me know down below if any of that ends up resonating uh, feel free to come back in a couple weeks as well and let me know because this is true for the next couple weeks so moving on to pisces pisces so this full moon for you is happening in your fifth house which is kind of fun kind of cute you know it's like you're dealing with this this full moon is bringing up like love romance joy children fertility definitely fertility this could be a, a pretty fertile time i mean it is a full moon but you never know so i would just say be a little bit careful with this with this one okay it could definitely bring some some life into the world even if you're not necessarily trying to so yeah it could be a, a time where it's bringing up children if you're a parent this could be something situation happening with your children or even some kind of like ending happening you know some kind of cycle finally closing out or you feeling a little bit more emotionally connected to the people in your life that you love and finding joy through that finding joy through your emotional bonds this could also be a time where you are maybe ending some kind of fling uh, if you've been having some kind of fling or like dating someone and maybe you realize like they're not for you or they just don't fit into your life the way that you thought they would uh, for others of you this could be a time where you're getting back to what your heart desires what you're passionate about or where you may need to release certain insecurities around self-worth or your self-expression in some way. So we have a few different various things that this could be. So um, we also have uh, the sun at the time of this full moon gonna be on Pluto in your 11th house. So this could also bring up some really deep insights regarding your friends and social clicks, social circles, networking, Things like that. Um, it could be a time where it's like maybe you have some people that you've had shared interests with, but maybe your interests don't align anymore. Or maybe where, you know, you're kind of seeing certain things that you've been interested in, maybe you're no longer interested in anymore. You know, maybe you're going in a new direction now or something. But it could definitely be a theme of friends and social groups, etc. It could be could also bring up a little bit of like conflict or tension there or some intensity there there could be some kind of revelation or you know something revealed that you didn't know or you could be seeing something very differently and then we also have mercury retrograding in aquarius which is your 12th house so it's going to start in your 12th house and then move back into your 11th house and so this is definitely going to be a time where you're feeling maybe a little bit more internal or where you're reflecting more on internal things the past different patterns possibly like self-sabotaging behaviors you know where you're maybe even your focus is on something a little bit more personal or behind the scenes or you're maybe not talking to as many people in some way and then once mercury retrogrades back into your 11th house it will be a time where there is a lot going on in terms of friends in your social life and mercury retrogrades back into capricorn on the 25th and so that could be a time where there's a lot of confusion surrounding certain friends or people in your life alliances allies like things like this like like-minded people <laughs> and so acquaintances etc like a lot of people could be coming back around in your life like people you haven't seen since high school like all of a sudden they friend request you or something or want to like meet up randomly like stuff like that it's like old friends old acquaintances etc kind of coming back around usually with mercury retrograde in the 11th but it can also be a time where there is some gossip unfortunately in terms of friend groups um or where there is kind of some confusion or where there's like a reflection period on friends and the people that you keep in your life and so and that could go through some intense changes as well since mercury will retrograde back to pluto in your 11th and so there could also be some deep stuff that comes up with friends so anyways definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating i would really really love to hear your feedback and it would really help my channel and uh yeah make sure to like this video and we are going to move on to aries aries so this full moon for you is happening in your fourth house of home family your past your parents your roots your foundation your heritage your culture where you come from all that great stuff right so this could be a time where your focus is pulled towards more personal or internal matters 
whether regarding your home life, living situation, family, or the people that you have very close emotional bonds with. And so it's definitely highlighting something in this area for you. Uh, it could be a peak moment or some kind of situation that arises that kind of needs your attention or an ending uh, in this area of life. And so there's definitely a focus though on your home and family and your personal life, what's going on behind closed doors kind of thing. You're really being kind of drawn to focus more on that, more on your roots and your foundation in order to get back to your goals, your career, your public life, your reputation, etc. So it's kind of highlighting something with home and family in order to get that straight so you can get to where you want to go in life. That is what's coming up for you during this full moon. It could be an intense one though. It could be bringing up certain intense feelings, whether with you or with a family member or someone that you're really close to or just be the people that you live with in your household. It could be stirring up some feelings there, some emotions there that may need to be dealt with because this full moon is opposite Pluto and the sun is on Pluto. So this could be exposing some kind of deep stuff or some kind of intensity, you know, that is that you're really kind of pulled between your personal and private life versus your public life, your career, what you're doing out in the world, where you're going, your goals, etc. And so these themes could be really big for you around this full moon. We also have Mercury retrograding in your 11th house of friends, social connections, social groups, like-minded people, acquaintances, etc. Um, also sometimes ambitions and like, you know, dreams and stuff. So it could be a time where really all in all, you're really reflecting on your goals and what you want in life and the direction you're going in, where you belong, things like this. And so with Mercury retrograding in your 11th house, it could bring up some confusion, delays, reflections or reversals regarding friends and your social life, but also your ambitions. It could also bring up some gossip sometimes with Mercury in the 11th and could bring like old people back around, like old acquaintances or friends, kind of like I was telling Pisces because they have Mercury retrograding back into their 11th eventually when it goes into Capricorn. It, it's kind of like an old person that you went to high school with, like randomly adding you on Facebook or wanting to meet for coffee or something like that, like someone you haven't talked to in a while or someone that you used to be friends with kind of coming back around or becoming a, a focus for whatever reason or a topic that you end up like remembering or talking about. So, and then it will retrograde back into your 10th house where you will be really reflecting on your power and career and your status and your goals and where you're going, your future and what you're building. You know, it's going to be kind of a serious time where you're reflecting on some deep stuff, uh, where you're going in life, you know, what's going on. So that is what I see for you, Aries. Definitely let me know down below if this ended up resonating with you. I would really, really love to know how this uh, energy is affecting you guys. So please, please do that. And we are going to move on to Taurus. All right, my beautiful Taurians, this full moon for you is happening in your third house of your environment, your kind of everyday schedules, the things that you do on a day to day basis, the people, places and things in your day to day life, your errands, etc. It could be a time where you are somehow connecting a little bit more to your surroundings, your local environment, the people in your local environment with this full moon. Could also be bringing up some kind of intense ending though to do with that in some way. You know, this, this full moon, I would say you could be getting some intuitive insights on what's going on in your surroundings and how you're connecting with your environment and your day-to-day -day life in some way. It could also be a time where you're maybe ending some kind of learning endeavor or maybe you had been learning a new skill and this is kind of like a peak moment or an ending with that. It could also be a time where you're getting a lot of messages, phone calls, or something like that, you know. It, the, the third house rules a lot of different things. It can also bring up the topic of short travels, siblings, relatives, etc., neighbors. And partially it could be kind of intense, whatever does come up, because this full moon's opposite Pluto. And so there could be some kind of intensity or some kind of deep realization or deep topic that comes up where it's kind of like your your belief systems have been changing or the way that you're looking at the world, the way that you're moving forward has been changing and where it is that you're going has been changing. And this is kind of wrapping that up for you. So definitely let me know down below if that's accurate so far. We also have Mercury retrograding in your 10th house of career, status, public image, reputation, authority figures, your future goals, 
And so you are really going to be reflecting on these things, um, some big serious life questions on, you know, where am I going? What am I doing? Have I achieved what I wanted to? Am, am I at where I wanted to be? I'm not getting any younger kind of thing. And that could be a big realization some of you guys are having right now actually as well with the full moon and cancer and mercury retrograding in your 10th just really reflecting on time feeling a little bit more nostalgic feeling a little bit more sentimental uh you know maybe it may be a good time to like really go back and and revisit like revisit um an old childhood home or city or something like that and then also mercury will retrograde back into your ninth house and conjunct pluto so that could be a massive deep reflection on your belief systems on something to do with education like if you're going to school for something it could be a time where you're like seriously rethinking whatever you're you know trying to go to school for whatever subject you're learning it could be a time where you are uh, relearning something you know like learning something new about something you thought you already knew uh, so things like that could be coming up around this time for you Taurus definitely let me know down below though if any of this resonates and if you see any of these themes in your life I'd really really love to know and we are going to move on to Gemini. Okay, Gemini, this Cancer full moon is happening in your second house of finances, resources, and priorities. So money, honey, <laughs> assets, your, your revenue, your income, the, the different streams or forms of income that you have, all of that is really, really relevant here with this full moon. And it's opposite Pluto, so it's kind of an intense full moon. This could be a time where you're seriously thinking about making some changes or where you are kind of even wrapping up some kind of cycle to do with money and finances. Maybe you've been really focused on investing or your financial future or where you're going with finances, how to bring in more money, et cetera, et cetera. And so this could be a time where maybe you are ending an old way of going about making money or going about your income or something like that. This Cancer Full Moon could also quite literally be like you getting rid of stuff that you don't need anymore that you used to be attached to, uh, getting rid of like, you know, stuff that you've just been clinging to or holding on to that just isn't really like needed in your life anymore. And that's another great keyword is your needs. You know, you, you could be reflecting on your needs and what you need emotionally. And so this could definitely be a time for that where you're looking for the things that actually support you and your priorities are becoming more of a focus and, and where you're more focused on what actually supports you and the life that you wanna have. And so that's gonna be really big for this full moon, I think. And it could also bring up some changes regarding finances, investments, and things like that. And kind of releasing things that are out of your control. You know, it's really bringing up where you're kind of clinging to things and where you need to kind of let go of things. And Mercury is going to retrograde in your ninth house of belief systems, travel, education, and your worldviews, your faith. So with Mercury retrograding here, it could be a reflection on your belief systems. It could be a reflection on how you are going about making money or how you're learning more about money or finances or the things that you want to invest in or deals that you're making or things like that. Not a good time for signing contracts or doing anything that would not be good to change your mind on eventually or would not be good to revisit again, like your taxes, right? Um, it's not a good time for doing your taxes. I would say at least wait until after February 3rd. So just a couple more weeks because Venus is retrograde in your eighth, Mercury is gonna retrograde in your eighth and it's gonna be on Pluto. And so whatever comes up is going to be kind of intense and kind of deep. And, you, and if you're trying to do something like a little bit more permanent, you may not want to have to backtrack on that or reverse that or change your mind on that, you know? So watch out for making big purchases. Mercury retrograde though in your eighth could also be a time where like money that you owe or money that's owed to you is coming up. Could be something that was owed to you a while ago, finally coming, or something that you owed a while ago that you didn't pay, somehow coming back up. So do just keep that in mind. Um, but it's also very good for kind of reflecting on where you're at financially and getting things done that maybe you've been putting off financially. So definitely let me know down below, Gemini, if this resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback and how you're feeling this energy so far. Um, and feel free to come back the next couple weeks and let me know. And with that being said, that is all for this full moon video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos.